All right, everybody, welcome in. It's 1410 Wing Live. We appreciate you tuning in and hanging out with us here this afternoon. I hope you're all having a great day. Happy Thursday. As we get things started, let's bring on our guest. For those of you who have not noticed on ESPN, they've been airing KBO games, professional baseball games, uh, live from Korea. Uh, and one of the players in the KBO is actually from Fort Loramie, and we bring him on now. We have Jared Hoing with us. Jared, welcome in, man. How are you? I appreciate your time, well, this morning, but technically really late for you. Hey, no problem, Justin. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Now, again, what's the time difference? So you said it's about what, 1230? We're at midnight? Past midnight. Yeah. <laughs> almost where I'm at right now. Yeah, we had a long game, three and a half hour game, a long bus ride. Got stuck in a little bit of traffic. So, yeah, it took me a little bit to get on. Yeah, we appreciate you uh, taking any time at all. Uh, with that being said, I mean, again, you played baseball at Fort, Fort Loramie. Give everyone a little bit of background information about your time at Fort Loramie. You know, you went to Toledo. Uh, just give everyone a little bit of background information about yourself. Oh, boy, just a small town kid from Fort Loramie. Uh, just grew up in the country, loved playing baseball, um, you know, played at Fort Army for four years, won a state championship in 2007, um, so that was pretty awesome. They went on to Toledo for three years, um, then got drafted in 2010 by the Texas Rangers in the 10th round and been playing ball ever since. Now, it's interesting. Now, you, you didn't go to Korea until about 2018, correct? Correct. Yeah, my first year over here was uh, 2018. What was it about? I mean, when you now you kind of had, you went back and forth a lot between the Rangers and the Miners. You were you know you would go back and forth a lot, but you got to get some major at bats too, though, with the Rangers, which is pretty neat. You got to play in the playoffs as well. Before we get to your time in Korea, just talk about your journey. How was that a frustrating time being bounced back and forth, or was it still a dream come true playing at that level? Uh, you know, at first it was a dream come true. Obviously, um, you know, it's every kid's dream to get to the big leagues. Uh, so my time there was awesome. Um, you know, after bounce up and down you kind of know what your role is um then you kind of get labeled as kind of a a 4a player and you know you, you might have a month in triple a you might have a month in the big leagues and vice versa and you just you never know where you're going to live and um you know getting the opportunity to play baseball every day over in korea um seemed strange um at the time but now it's the best decision i've ever made you know it's interesting right now with everything going on you know here uh in the states we're we don't know if there's going to be baseball here in 2020. And you guys are the first professional sports league at all, not just baseball, but professional sports league at all that has officially, you know, come back since this pandemic started. When With where we're at right now here, we're talking about, man, all these different things that are going to have to happen for Major League Baseball to resume. You guys were at that stage not too long ago. Where are, where are we at right now compared to where you guys are as far as being ready to play in your opinion? Uh, I feel like it's starting to die down in the States. You know, obviously I'm over here, so I don't know too much. But, um, you know, the biggest difference is the United States is so big. Um, Korea is the size of Indiana, so you can kind of keep your teams in a bubble, so to speak. Um, you know, we're, we travel by bus everywhere, so we don't have to fly. Um, so you can kind of stay in a little bit more of a bubble, I feel like, here. We're in the States. You know, you're flying cross country. There's a lot of moving parts. Um, so I don't know what the heck they're going to have planned, but hopefully they have something figured out. When you decided to go play professionally in Korea a few years ago, what was it about this league that sold you uh, that this was a great opportunity for you to go and continue your professional baseball career? I had a lot of old teammates that uh, came over here. That absolutely loved it. Um, Josh Lindblom included. Um, he'd signed with the uh, Brewers in the offseason. Uh, he kind of encouraged me to come over here. And, um, you know, big biggest thing is, you know, obviously playing every day. Uh, but a great opportunity to take care of my family. Um, you know, you're talking about guaranteed contracts and a lot of money to keep playing baseball. So, uh, you know, it's kind of a no-brainer. Is your family with you in Korea? Do they go with you and stay during the season, or how does that work? Normally they do. Uh, right now they're back at home in Fort Army. Uh, we're trying to get them over here, hopefully here in a couple weeks. Uh, you know, like I said, everything's died down here coronavirus-wise. Uh, the biggest – hardest parts was flights you know obviously there's not many flights going to and from so you just kind of got plan around that and hopefully it just dies down even farther um in the states as many days as we go it's pretty cool that the kbo games are being aired on espn here uh, i know some of them you know we talked about the hour difference a lot of those games are being aired you know overnight 3 a.m here uh, but are being replayed throughout the day on espn so it's pretty cool to get a chance to see that it's the first opportunity for Americans to be able to see what a live sporting event is going to look like post-coronavirus, post-COVID-19. You as a player, though, 
what was explain what the league was like before this hit? How you know because it's a very festive atmosphere at games in Korea. You guys have cheerleaders. It's a little bit different than baseball here in the states. Uh, it's it's completely different. I mean, it really is. Some, uh, you know, a World Cup soccer crowd jammed in, into a stadium that holds maybe 20, 000, 15, 20 thousand people. Um, they got cheerleaders, like I said, dancing on the dugout. Um, you know, the beer's cheap, food's cheap. People people pack the stands. Um, they're cheering the whole time. You know, you could be down 10 runs and somebody gets a base hit and the whole crowd is still there cheering along with you. So it, it's a very festive atmosphere. And that's the best part about uh, the KBO. And hopefully on these games, um, on ESPN, they start letting fans in. So then people from back home can see how awesome these fans are in Korea. Absolutely. Now, with that being said, so you you were used to what the atmospheres were like before this. Uh, what precautions were put in place to allow you guys to be able to come back? Obviously, no fans in the stands, but are, are you being? Have you been tested? How often do you guys get tested? Or is it just for if you start feeling symptoms? What is that process like? Because that's the big question here: is well, you know, how often will tests be, you know, done? Will they? How many tests will they even have available to them? What's that process like for you guys? Uh, so basically, when we flew over here, um, I think it was late March, um, we immediately went from the airport and went straight to the clinic to get tested. Um, so we got tested, and then we had to do a two-week quarantine. Um, even though we had a, a negative test, we had to stay in our apartments for two weeks. Um, so that was probably the hardest thing I've ever done, just sitting there by myself, trying to keep busy in a small apartment in a foreign country. Um, so that was super hard. And then every day they check our temperature. Um, when we get to the ballpark, they check our temp temperature. And then when we leave, they check it again. And this is everybody that walks into the stadium, um, players, coaches, trainers, um, you know, field staff, anybody gets their temperature checked. Um, you know, they really encourage to wear masks. Um, so that's kind of caught on very well here. You know, everybody just kind of wears a mask. So it's hard to do. I don't like wearing the dang things, but, it's you know, it keeps us to be able to play baseball and so be it. Absolutely. And we have Jared Hoying with us here, play baseball at Fort Loramie. Uh, here, not too far north from where we are at. Uh, you were, you know, played at Toledo. You were drafted by the Rangers in 2010. Went back and forth between the main roster and the minors until about 2018 when you decided to go play for the KBO. With that being said, I mentioned the atmosphere at these games. Now we're talking about how fans are going to feel watching games with no fans in attendance. How is it as a player when you talked about how great that atmosphere is, and you hope that one day we get to see what that atmosphere is? How different is it when you walk out there and there's no fans? How quiet is it? Just what's that feel like? It's, it's really weird. Um, you can hear a pin drop sometimes throughout the stadium. Um, you know, you're so competitive. So when you're at bat or you're playing defense, you're locked in for that pitch. And then you, uh, you know, you kind of stare around the crowd and drift around, but uh, there's no crowd to look at. So that makes it a little hard. And it's hard to get that adrenaline rush from the stands, the fans cheering in the stands. So, uh, you know, I kind of always count on that extra gear. I call it, I can get from the fans, but uh, not having that, I'm trying to, have to dig deep a little little bit to find some extra momentum and extra adrenaline. So, I mean, and that's tough too. So, like, you guys, I mean, you talk about how you watch what you say. I'm sure everything can be picked up. I mean, it's funny you hear about Major League Baseball, the big sign-stealing scandal that happened last year. I mean, they're having to bang on trash cans to be able to – it'll be a lot easier to do that now in these wider stadiums, I tell you that much. <laughs> Absolutely. Like I said, you got to watch what you say out there. I'm a pretty competitive guy. Um you know, it's a big crowd. You can kind of yell at whatever you want. But here, you, you kind of got to watch what you say. Did you ever think when you were playing at Fort Laramie that you'd be able to continue your baseball career this long and to play at the level that you have? Oh, boy. I You know, playing ball, I never looked ahead. I just liked playing so much. I just took one step at a time and kind of one day at a time. And, uh, you know, now it's my 11th season playing professionally. And it's kind of surreal. Um, thinking about it and looking back how far I've come from my time at Fort Laramie and even Toledo. Um, but I still continue that philosophy just kind of one day at a time and you never know where this game's going to take you. Uh, you know, when you talk about, you know, your old high school, how often do you, I mean, you're playing during their baseball season at times too. Do you get back to any games at all? I mean, now with technology, I'm sure it's pretty easy to find games when the season's going on, of course. Yeah, luckily technology is great. You know, I keep track um, all the sports at Fort Laramie. It's a really small town, tight knit community. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I listen as much as I can. A couple years ago, when they won state um, in 2018, I believe, yeah, they won state. Um, it worked out great. They had 11 o'clock game, I think, and I was listening in the hotel room. 
um it was just awesome i had goosebumps all over it reminded me of 2007 so uh thank goodness for technology it really is an amazing thing all right jared hoing with us here played baseball at fort Laramie. now playing in the kbo for the and i mispronounced the name how is it it's not hanwa what, what's the name of your team <laughs> Hanawa. Everybody says Hanawa. I could be saying it wrong here too, but yeah, we call it the Hanawa Eagles. Now you have a translator, correct? I heard an interview that you did with uh, with Michael Hearn uh, just last week or week before. I heard you said that you have a you have a translator there. Yeah, yeah, he's with me all the time in the dugout. Anytime I'm at the field, um, if I need to order something, he orders it for me. Um, so he takes care of me. He's my right hand man here. Um, I rely on him a lot. And without a translator, it'd be impossible. Um, it's just the language barrier is that hard. And uh, so, yeah, thank goodness for him. With not being able to speak you know, the same language as the majority of your teammates, that make it difficult to form relationships with them. We always talk about how difficult that could be for foreign players in our country. I'm curious, you're getting to experience the opposite of that. How difficult is it to form relationships with your teammates in that regards? It's really hard. You know, you, you want to have conversations with them. You want to go out to eat with the guys and hang out. But um, just the language barrier is so hard. So a lot of nonverbal communication, um, you know, you still pick on each other and joke around in the clubhouse and in the dugout. You know, you find ways to do that. But, um, you know, some of these really good guys here, you want to take it to the next level and, you know, really get to know these guys personally. But it's just – it's dang near impossible. All right, Jared, last thing is we let you go. You've played in the major leagues and you're playing professionally over there. To go back to what we discussed earlier, with all the roadblocks in the way for what – potentially keeping Major League Baseball from resuming or even starting a season in 2020. What's the number one obstacle you think is going to keep that from happening? You mentioned for Korea, it's a little bit easier because of how confined everything is uh, for all the teams. Is it the, how, you know, the travel for, for the Major League Baseball teams? I mean, there's an idea that was put out there about them potentially all playing in Arizona, kind of replicating what probably led to you guys being able to come back to play, just playing in a much tighter space. Yeah, you know, the logistics of it are going to be really hard. And uh, another, my thought on this thing, too, in the States, you got half the guys that are making a lot of money, you know, over $10, $20, $100 million, $200 million. Um, you know, time away from their families is going to be tough for them. So half the league isn't going to want to spend time away from their families. And the other half is going to need the money. Um, mm -hmm. You know, guys at AAA and guys that are bouncing up and down, you know, guys with maybe a one-year service time, you know, they're really counting on those paychecks. They're not, not getting those paychecks right now. So they really want to ramp this league up and um, do whatever they can to get playing baseball again. So I feel like that might be the toughest part is the players might be split 50-50 on who wants to do some drastic measures just to get playing and who doesn't. So I don't know. It's curious to watch. I'm just thankful I'm playing baseball right now. Yeah, and the players' union in Major League Baseball is very tight too. But at some point, the players' union is going to have to decide – which side of the players that they're going to more want to heavily represent because I, the star, the superstars of major league baseball, their, their opinions are going to carry more weight than the middle of the line guys in your opinion. Do you think that's the case? Absolutely. I really do think that's the case. I know if I was in that, that position, um, you know, if I'd be in the, in triple A right now, or, you know, like I said, bouncing up and down and not getting those paychecks, it's, you know, you got a mortgage, you got kids, um, mm -hmm. you got going on. So, uh, you know, it's easy to say, well, I want everything to be perfect if you're making $100 million. But when you're not making that, you know, you're only good at one thing. So that, playing baseball, so that, it's uh, it's actually some real-world problems. Yeah, the minor league season has not officially been canceled, I don't believe. I know there were some reports that came out a few weeks ago, and then minor league baseball came out in a few that How difficult – think about what you go through when you were playing in the minors, how important it was developmentally. If an entire season for minor league baseball is taken away, how much damage does that do in regards to the progression for a lot of these players who are on a step-by-step -step journey to try to get into the majors? It's huge. You know, I was a late bloomer. I didn't get to the big leagues till I was 26. And, um, you know, if I was in double A AA or triple A, knocking on the door, um, you know, kind of slowly making your way up from all the way through the ranks. And to have a season cut short, well, all of a sudden you lose a year, but that also means you're a year older without playing baseball. Now all of a sudden you got a crop of rookies coming in or hot prospects they want to keep around. They got a little more inv money invested in them. Um, you just never know. You might get to a point where they might say, well, you're just too old. Sorry about it. Um, so there's a lot of underlying factors through all this that it's, you know, high school seniors aren't going to play their senior year. And some guys, it might be it for them just because of this dang virus. 
last thing, this will be the last thing, but you talked about your family, how you're still working and efforting to get them, you know, to be able to come to you. That's the other realistic possibility of this is a lot of the major league baseball players, they would be away from their families for potentially four and a half months. Obviously every player out there is going to say they want to be with their families, but how much is that going to play into a factor of, Hey, if these players, all of these players can't have their families with them, that's a big deal. You being a family man yourself, obviously can attest to that. It's a huge deal. You know, baseball's hard enough. You know, it's a mental grind the way it is. It's such a mental game. And when you're by yourself and you're sitting in a hotel room by yourself, your mind kind of wanders. Um, family keeps us all grounded. Family is what we play for. Um, that's everything to all of us that have wives and kids. And, um, you know, not having that support system, it makes things really hard. All right. Now, you guys just won tonight. When's your – or? Yeah, tonight for you, this morning for us. But when's your next game? And kind of tell us a little bit about your team. I mean, if we ever have a chance to see your team play on ESPN, just give us a little bit of background about your team and kind of where you guys fall into the thick of things. Yeah, my first year here, we had a really good team. Um, we had a lot of speed, a lot of power, some good pitching, a great bullpen last year, a um, little rough year. Um, probably put too much pressure on ourselves as a team. Uh, we had some injuries. We lost our shortstop and center fielder. Um, so anytime you lose guys up the middle, it's tough. And here you have the depth. Um, so if somebody, one of your main players gets hurt, they might get replaced with a 20-year-old um, who is, you know, not very seasoned, to say the least. So um, we got everybody, everybody healthy this year. Um, like I said, we won two games, um, two out of three so far, and we look pretty good, swinging the bats pretty well, getting some good pitching. So uh, I, I think we'll be all right this year. You know, like the league, everybody picks us um, to finish last in the league. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we finish in the top five and make the playoffs this year. Very nice. I like the optimism there. Uh, Tony Barhorst, uh, he, he messages in. He wants to know what your walk-up music is and how do the fans react to your home runs? Because he said there was an interesting way that they react to your home runs. They, uh, like I said, they, they got some little Korean dance and song. Um, I, I don't know the words. I just hear Jared <laughs> Hoying a couple times. Um, but yeah, when I hit a home run, they go absolutely bonkers in the stands. And that's, that's some of the best things about the KBO. And those are probably some of the better memories I have when this is all done someday. All right. Well, Jared, thank you so much, man, for taking time and just giving us a little bit of background information about the KBO. Cause a lot of people, you know, I do an afternoon show here in Dayton and we're always asking people all the time, hey, are you going to watch? I know you're not familiar with the league, but will you watch? You're one reason why a lot of people will start watching here locally. Uh, but I was curious about the league. You know, the bat flips, that's another conversation that people have all the time. That's disrespectful in the eyes of most in Major League Baseball. And over there, that's part of the fun of the game. Oh, it's encouraged over here. It's awesome. I, I can't do a bat flip. They always want me to do it. But um, by the time I do hit a home run, I, you know, I'm busy watching the ball. I don't even think about flipping the bat. So uh, maybe one of these days I'll do a bat flip and surprise everybody. But it's just part of it. You know, guys will take a good swing and pop the ball straight in the air. And they'll still bat flip, you know, just part of their finish of their swing. Um, so it's it's I love it. it. There's no disrespect about it. Um, it's just part of the game and what makes it fun. All right, Jared, I'm gonna leave you alone. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. This was great. I appreciate the background information, and I uh, hope you're safe and you're healthy. And the uh, same thing for your family. And hope you guys can reunite here soon. Hey, I appreciate it, Justin. Thanks again. Take care. Absolutely. All right, I'm Justin Kinner. This has been 1410 Wing Live. I appreciate everyone who tuned in. Uh, and shout out, to, again, Jared Hoying for taking time and spending time with us here this afternoon. The Justin Kinner Show coming up later this afternoon, 3 to 6, 1410 Wing AM. We're streaming live at wingam.com. We'll do this again tomorrow. Thank you, everybody.